Here we go. Okay, so let me just tell you, there's been two really big pieces of news that have come out lately. We're going to watch a video first for the first part. This is a video about talking about the southern border of the United States. We've talked about the southern border of the United States a lot on my channel, haven't we? Um, we've talked about it in many different periods in the past. Recently, though, the focus has been elsewhere. And in that time, some really horrible developments have happened. And we really, really, really need to be able to look this in the eyes and not turn away while we're looking at this stuff. Um, they, welcome, welcome, uh, Slade517. Thank you for the follow. Happy to be here. Just keep in mind, we're doing a pretty serious topic right now, so I apologize if it's a little heavy. Um, oh, well, thank you so much, Ace Man. I appreciate that, those kind words. I try to be. I try. All right, here we go. So we're going to watch this video real quick. This is from um, MSNBC, and this is talking about something that's been going on um, over the last couple of months on our border. And it's pretty, pretty terrifying. We have some breaking news from the border. Nearly 9,000 unaccompanied minors have been expelled from the United States due to a pandemic-related measure effectively ending their asylum. 159,000 people have been expelled from the U.S. ever since the CDC emergency order took effect in March. And joining me now live from Arizona is Jacob Soboroff, MSNBC correspondent and author of Separated. Jacob, thank you for being here. Tell us what's going on. Jonathan, we were here on the border on assignment yesterday when this news broke late in the evening. Uh, the Trump administration throughout the course of family separations uh, had one goal, and that was to immediately expel Central American migrant children as soon as they got to this country, in addition to being able to indefinitely detain parents and children. And now the government is saying in a court case that they have expelled, Sorry. as you said, 8,800 unaccompanied children here under the cover of the coronavirus. That means that when they get here, lawyers say they have have little legal protections, little access to due counsel, a uh, due process, I should say, and they've been kept in hotels in many instances. We've talked about this uh, before. Lawyers have been up in arms. We hadn't had a full accounting of the numbers, but the total for unaccompanied children, 8,800, 7,600 members of families, and that includes parents and children, and the total number of all migrants expelled under the guise of the coronavirus is 159,000. And I'd like to just say real quick, Jonathan, that there uh, is evidence that the government despite the fact that this is a public health uh, law, public health rule, they are deporting people who do not have the coronavirus, contradicting their own underlying justification uh, for what lawyers say is inconscionable. Jonathan? Jacob Soberov, we are lucky to have you on this story. We'll be following this story throughout the day on MSNBC. Jacob Soberov, MSNBC correspondent, thank you very much for being here. More AM Joy after the break. So this is a, pre this is a pretty good summary of what we've been seeing increasingly get worse on the border. Earlier this year, I talked about how the conditions in our in our border detention facilities, which are absolutely 100% unequivocally concentration camps. There can be no doubt about it. Don't play nice with this anymore. These are concentration camps, and we're about to find out even more in the next section that we're going to talk about this. But I just want to establish that what we are doing at the border, what our country, what what representatives of our state are doing at the border is turning away children. Children who are coming here often alone because they have no other choice. They're fleeing bad circumstances. They may be fleeing sexual violence. They may be they may be fleeing gang violence. They may be fleeing all kinds of other things. And these people are traveling hundreds and hundreds of miles, begging rides, walking across deserts, um, carrying water on their backs. And they're being turned away and re-released at the border, just dropped back into the countries to the south with no, with no counsel, with no consideration for their well-being. These are children. This is children that our country is doing this to. Do you really think that America, the so-called greatest country on earth, can't actually handle giving proper care to 8,000 children that roam in from the desert? 8,800 children we have turned around and 159,000 people. 8,000 of those have been children that we have just turned away at the border and said, nope, get the fuck out. Do you remember in World War II when a boat of, of Jewish people from Germany came to the United States and it was turned away and that was considered to be, be one of the most shameful moments in our history? 
Well, we're doing that every single day right now. We are literally putting up our hands and saying, go fuck off and die. We, the most so-called, the, the country that has a statue, uh, which, which says, bring us your huddled masses, your poor and your wretched, uh, bring them to our shores so that they can come and, and have a life for themselves. The hypocrisy is unfathomable. And beyond that, the absolute bullshit that has been put out by the Trump administration claiming that this is anything other than a concentration camp is nothing but an illusion meant to deceive you and throw your eyes elsewhere while they commit acts against fucking violation of humanity. Fucking crimes against humanity. We're about to talk about that one, Carpe Pax, because as it turns out, this is just what we do to people that we don't allow in. Often illegally, mind you. Keep in mind that in order to seek refuge in the United States, the way our laws have it, you have to come into the United States and declare refugee status. You cannot declare refugee status elsewhere. You have to come into the United States. It is a, it is a, if I remember correctly, it is a misdemeanor to cross the border. So we have effectively illegalized being a refugee. Yeah, in fact, Ace Man... I actually think that Biden will make this slightly better. Not a lot, but a little bit. We're way less likely to turn away refugee claims under Biden than we are under Trump. Donald Trump fucking hates brown people. Do you realize this? He fucking hates brown people. He enacted a ban against Muslims and targeted countries, even though there's Muslims from all kinds of countries, he only targeted countries where brown people are largely from. This guy targets, as was reported in this very report we just watched, it is specifically targeting children from Central America. This is what Donald Trump does. He hates people who aren't white. And he goes, eh, we love our ex, we love our blah, blah, blah. And he says these stupid, meaningless things. And his actions are the complete opposite. His actions are to abandon children in the desert to die. If you don't, if people didn't think that our country right now is in a terrible place, just keep in mind that we have concentration camps on the border. We are turning away people to die, people who need, people who have no choice, children who we could easily afford to help. It would be, it is simple for us to help children. Oh, no, figuratively nobody. That is, that is the exact article we are going to be reading next. That was what inspired this. So we're going to be going into that. No, Carpe Pax, we can talk about Biden's legislative and voting record because I agree that the D Democratic Party has a huge hand in this. I mean, fuck, Obama, oh, okay, uh, Bush established ICE. Obama kept it going. Obama was the one who built these camps. However, I will note that Obama didn't fill these camps. It was Donald Trump who did that. It was Donald Trump who actually used them. For whatever reason, Obama said, we need to have detention centers in case, blah, 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 da, 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 but he never actually used them. And that's not to say that he's much better, because I do agree that the Democratic establishment is weak and a false opposition party. However, however, nonetheless, Donald Trump is the one who's filled them and who has done things like what we are about to talk about next. Oh, Mooney Machine. Uh, my, I'm friends with some some lawyers for Rices in San Antonio, and it seems like we have people who desperately want to help help, and others who actively work to stop stop them. Yes, I have actually contributed to Rices. I've bo I've boosted them up on here many times. Rices is amazing. They are wonderful. Um, so they're a really really good. Um, uh, we're 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 they're a really really good organization, and they're doing their best. But there's only so much you can do. God, the number of times that Trump has said empty words about how much he respects social category X just to show how little he cares through his action and lack thereof. Yeah, y'all remember back when Donald Trump was running for president and that somebody passed him that gaze for Trump flag and he like held it up and went, look, look, folks, the gays, they love me. It's this flag. It's a rainbow flag that says gays for Trump on it. They love me. And then immediately decided to, the second he got into office, ban trans people from the military. And then just recently publish a memo about how Christian organizations can spot and refuse uh, emergency service, like housing services to trans people. Do you remember that? 
Donald Trump is an is a an enemy of LGBT people. You should keep this in mind. He's not just bad. He is an active enemy. He targets us repeatedly over and over and over again. This has been this is this is unequivocal. It's objective fact that this guy has passed some of the most harmful legislation towards trans people in the history of this country. And he's continuing to court the religious right, which wants to repeal gay marriage. Now, whether they can pull that off is neither here nor there, but that's what they're aiming for. I mean, fuck, he chose Mike Pence. Mike Pence had state-sanctioned conversion therapy, state-sanctioned conversion therapy on his platform as early as 2015, one year before Donald Trump uh, chose him to be vice president. State-sanctioned conversion therapy. That's torture. That is state-sanctioned torture of gay and trans people. If you don't know what conversion therapy is, conversion therapy has, has, it is absolutely wild what some of this shit is. Conversion therapy has at times been literally administering electroshock therapy to gay people to get them to stop being gay. It's been, it is, it is sending kids to camps where they have to live apart from their family and are told script or read scripture constantly that tells them that they're wrong to be gay, that they're wrong to be gay. There has been attempts to associate pain with homosexual arousal. So you like guys, we're going to torture you until you stop liking them. Literally. This is fucking well documented. There are numerous documentaries we could watch about this. This isn't what we're talking about today, but I'm telling you, this is the platform of, of Donald Trump. And if you don't think that that applies to every other group that he's singled out, whether it's Muslims, whether it's, uh, whether it's brown people from South America that he doesn't like, you know, saying, oh, they're not sending us their best, all that. Hey, thanks for the follow, Rakasan. If you don't think that that is blatant and clear signaling of his intent. I don't know what to tell you at this point, but I would highly encourage everyone who watches my show to stop referring as much as possible, wherever it's possible, to stop referring to these camps at the border as anything other than exactly what they are, which is concentration camps. Because we're about to talk about something that makes it unequivocal. There is no denying this. And anybody in their right mind who denies this is, is simply dishonest. Yeah, there's been a number of, um, there, there has been a number of people reporting on this. Um, this was, uh, released this morning. Um, and just so you know, I did some digging on this. Um, this article was, is made by, um, Law and Crime is a law, obviously a law and crime blog that's run by, um, one of the, uh, executives of, of, uh, NBC. So one of the leading um, journalistic voices at NBC is the one who founded this, Dan Abrams. Um, this is considered to be a a trust a a reasonably trustworthy source on issues of law and crime. They were contacted by a whistleblower, and they're protecting their source. This has been corroborated by a number of large um a, lo a number of large um news organizations since then. So. Yeah, while this is the main source, because these are the guys who got the scoop on it, um, Jerry Lamb and and the Dan Abrams Law and Crime um, website, this has been corroborated by a number of larger sto larger um, newspapers since. Th this is brand new. This came out this morning and has, is since being confirmed by other ones. Yeah, yeah, here's the article. Here's the article for anybody who wants to talk about it or share this. Um, because this is what's being retweeted by a lot of things. But we're going to read this together because this is horrifying. This is genuinely horrifying. It's like an experimental concentration camp. It actually is just a concentration camp. Whistleblower complaint alleges mass hysterectomies at an ICE detention center. For those of you who don't know what a hysterectomy is, a hysterectomy is when you remove the womb of someone. It's when you remove the womb of someone who has a womb. That's what it is. Just so you know. Sterilization. It is about the most brutal form, the most invasive form of sterilization. There is no going back from a hysterectomy. And in fact, it can complete, it renders a woman completely infertile or a man who has a womb or a non-binary person who has a womb, renders them completely infertile. There is no reversing it. You cannot reverse this. 
Um, Redneck, I don't know if you, th you just followed me, my dude. Listen, you just followed me, my dude. And, and you don't know what I've been doing. My entire channel has been talking about this stuff. So if I'm going to give you a chance to fix, to, to fix your approach to this. Oh yes, this is absolutely, ab it's absolutely wild. This is absolutely unhinged, but this is the thing. And guess what? This was reported, this was reported by the migrants in the detention centers earlier, but it's taken obviously having an insider whistleblower to make it actually reach the news because people don't actually listen to the voices of the people who are, who are, um, who are, um, in there. Yes, this is, this is genocide. This is what genocide is. Intentionally, intentionally sterilizing people based on where they come from, based on their race, based on their ethnicity is genocide. So I just want people to be aware. This is not me alleging this. This is simply me concluding what, what is widely being reported right now. This is, we are at that degree. We are at that point. Redneck, I'm not arguing about this right now. We are not, I am not a fan of Biden. Like you're, 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 you're coming in here as a brand new viewer and you have no idea what to expect. So I recommend just sitting down and listening for a while. This is unambiguously a crime against humanity. Article 7.1G of the Rome statute. Not that the U.S. has ratified it, but still. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is, yeah, Dr. Mengele. Yeah, this is really terrifying. And we should be we need to keep our eyes on this. And I, I warned everybody, I know this is a heavy topic. It's, it's, it's not fun to talk about this, but we, ha we cannot look away. This is the moment in history where, uh, we choose whether we're going to be the people who say, no, this is enough. We cannot do this. We must resist this in any way that is within our means. We must resist this as strongly as we can or we choose to stand by. So let's dig into this story because I think it's really important that we talk to the, talk about this and we get the details. Several legal advocacy groups on Monday, that's today, filed a whistleblower complaint on behalf of a nurse at an Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE detention center, documenting jarring medical neglect within the facility, including a refusal to test de detainees for the novel coronavirus. Now remember, I, we watched that segment just a few minutes ago because you'll recall, you'll recall that the reason why they're turning people away is also because of coronavirus, but they won't even test people in their, in that they're detaining that they won't let leave who are trapped in a prison. They won't even test them for coronavirus. And an exorbitant rate of hysterectomies being performed on immigrant women. The nurse, Dawn Wooten, was employed at the Irwin County Detention Center in Georgia, which is operated by LaSalle Corrections, a private prison company. Damn, look at that. Donald Trump contracting, imprisoning Im immigrants, imprisoning refugees in a private prison that is then using their ability, their lack of oversight, to impose eugenics on these refugees. Yeah, I hope so too. I imagine they did. I'm sure this is this is I'm sure this person is is relatively safe. It does say number a number of legal advocacy groups. This probably this person probably has like a significant amount of, of legal protection. Um, the complaint was filed with the Office of the Inspector General, the OIG, for the Department of Homeland Security by advocacy groups Project South, Georgia Detention Wash, Ge Georgia Latino Alliance for Human Rights, and the South Georgia Immigrant Support Network. So that's five different legal, legal groups that have filed this. Multiple women have come forward to tell Project South what, that they, what they were perceived to be the inordinate rate at which women in ICDC were subjected to hysterectomies, a surgical operation in which all or part of the uterus is removed. Additionally, many of the immigrant women who underwent the procedure were reportedly confused when asked to explain why they had had the surgery, with one detainee likening their treatment to prisoners in com concentration camps. Recently, a detained immigrant told Project South that she talked to five different women detained at IACDC between October and December 2019 who had a hysterectomy done. The complaint stated, when she talked to them about the surgery, the women reacted confused when explaining why they had one done. The woman told Project South that it was as though the women were trying to sell tell themselves it was going to be okay. 
When I met all these women who had surgeries, I thought this was like an experimental concentration camp. It was like they were experimenting with our bodies. Weird. That's literally identical to what the Nazis did. Identical. There is Nazi shit going on in America right now, and it's publicly available information. This is no fucking, this isn't some wild conspiracy. This has been filed with five legal groups who have all the paperwork necessary to bring this ahead. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, you idiot. You beat me to it, Gina. Holy shit. Imagine coming into here talking about Donald Trump's ICE performing eugenicist procedures on people who are imprisoned, on women who are imprisoned, and then being like, huh, Trump-based. Get the fuck out of here. You have no excuse. This is not a lot of hyperbole conspiracy, my dude. This is not a lot of hyperbole conspiracy. This is breaking news. This is highly verified. They have all of the groups here, people named. Are you absurd? You are in denial, redneck. You are in denial. This is your government, your so-called president that is doing this. No, and actually no. I would, I would, you know what I would prefer? I would prefer if we treated humans like humans and not like, like, like we can just destroy their bodies, which is what you're advocating for right now. You and your fucking Trump buddies want to forgive Trump for the shit that's happening under his program. Donald Trump is like the biggest cheerleader of ICE that has ever existed. ICE members vote Donald Trump at like 75%. He has an incredible, incredible attachment to ICE. And Donald Trump has been and his administration have been personally involved in ICE to an incredible degree. So you can fuck right off with claiming this is conspiracy bullshit. You can fuck right off with that shit. This is eugenics. There is to be no doubt about this. Redneck, you might be, you might say that you're being in good faith. Wait, why would they be moved to Georgia? Wait, do you not realize how this works? Do you not realize that we have detention centers all over the place? There's a detention center in my fucking state because they can't, they don't want to keep them all at the border because as it turns out, they need to move things. They need to move things around and make it harder and more complicated and use their manpower, their limited manpower. I am arguing with a fucking flat, flat earther right now. Listen, if you're engaging in good faith, then then look, it's always possible you're engaging in good faith. But I would tell you that you should fucking sit down and have a real long think about the type of things that you're accusing and the type of way that you're going about it. You are looking for justifications to explain away crimes against humanity right now. Instead of going, oh my God, this is bad. You're not countering my questions. You're going, hmm, sure seems weird that they move them, except they do that all the time. You're literally, no, I'm not, absolutely not. I am not derailing this segment to, to uh, any further to debate with somebody who is in denial of reality. There is only one side to this, redneck. I'm sorry, but you can, you can spend some time in the fucking, uh, you, you can sp spend some fucking time in the ban zone. I don't give a shit. That's ridiculous. Are you absurd? <sighs> According to Wooten, ICDC consistently used a particular gynecologist outside of the facility who almost always opted to remove all or part of the uterus of his female detainee patients. Hmm. Kind of sounds like no Nazi doctors. Hmm. Out you go. Bye-bye. I am banning any of these people who come in here doing Trump apologia right now. You come in here. This is a warning. You do Trump apologia in my chat. You're fucking out of here. That's just how it's going to go. Don't do that during this segment. I am not going to, to sit here and have people uh, sit down here and, and try and argue with breaking news about something that we know has been going on about the countless egregious acts against human fucking well-being and, and against fucking humanity that we've seen going on under Donald Trump. 
Yeah, it's whataboutism about genocide. It's because you want to know what it is? Let me just tell you. You know what it is? It's called cognitive dissonance. They can't, they're at that point where, are we the baddies? It's that, except they can't conclude it. And so instead they have to find an excuse. They go, hmm, it sure is a coincidence that they moved, that people were in a detention center in Georgia, when that has literally no relevance to what's going on. We literally just talked about how they used a private prison to, de to detain people, and now they're using a specific doctor to get all kinds of hysterectomies done, all kinds of eugenicist hysterectomies done, and trying to keep it on the down low as much as possible. Hans, are we the baddies? Yes, this is literally that, though. It's funny because, like, right-wingers like to use that clip and try to make lefties seem like they're the baddies. But that's literally about Nazis realizing that they're the bad guys. Realizing that they have skulls on their fucking um, outfits. That they wear these, these, these skulls and that they're rounding people up and going, wait a minute, are we the bad guys? And then these people come in here. These people come the fuck in here. And then they try to argue against fucking not only not only do they argue about the paper trail of of abuses that have been going on but they argue about the most egregious one we've come across yet everybody he sees has a hysterectomy just about everybody wooten said adding that everybody's uterus cannot possibly be that bad to just to justify a hysterectomy We've questioned among ourselves, like, goodness, he's taking everybody's stuff out. He's taking everybody's fucking sexual organs out. That's his specialty. He's the uterus collector. I know that is an ugly thing to say. He's collecting these things or something. Everybody he sees, he's taking their uteruses out or he's taking their tubes out. What in the world is going on? Wooten also confirmed that many of the detained w women have told her that they didn't understand why they were being forced to have the procedure, explaining that some of the nurses obtained consent aka giant forms that you have to fill out or else what ha what happens to you because you've got armed ice guards around you that some of them obtain their consent by simply googling spanish he was banned he's gone The complaint details several accounts from detainees, including one woman who was not properly anesthetized during the procedure and had heard the aforementioned doctor tell the nurse that he had mistakenly removed the wrong ovary, resulting in her losing all reproductive ability. I'm just going to read this sentence again. The complaint details several accounts from detainees, including one woman who was not properly anesthetized, was partially awake during the procedure, and heard the aforementioned doctor tell the nurse that he had mistakenly removed the wrong ovary, resulting in her losing all reproductive ability. I want you to just take a second. We're going to take a second here. We're going to do an exercise in humanity. I want everyone to close their eyes. All right? Close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that you've been forced to a hospital, people aren't speaking the language that you know, and you wake up in the middle of a surgery on a surgery table to hear, oops, we re removed the wrong ovary. And then you get out of surgery later and you find out you can never have kids. Can anybody, can anybody put your, uh, put yourself in those shoes? Yeah, that's what I that's what I fucking thought. If you're no no, even worse than that, Mooney machine, not just a big scar. Just imagine you just have an empty an empty bag. So, yeah. Okay, true, Otona no Aji. I I I did mess up my my little metaphor there. My apologies. Another said that she was scheduled for the procedure, but when she questioned why it was necessary, she was given three different, com three completely different answers. She was originally told by this doctor that she had an ovarian cyst and was going to have a, tw a small 20-minute procedure um, done, which would drill three small holes in her stomach to drain the cyst. According to the complaint, the officer who was transporting her to the hospital... See? Remember how I told you that armed guards would transport these people to the hospital? You can't exactly get consent when you're being escorted by an armed guard. 
The officer who was transporting her to the hospital told her that she was receiving a hysterectomy to have her womb removed. When the hospital refused to operate on her because her COVID-19 test came back positive for antibodies, she was then transferred back to ICDC, where the ICDC nurse said that the procedure she was going to have entailed dilating her vagina and scraping tissue off. They just said this is going to a single doctor. There is a single doctor who is willing to collaborate. This is, this is exactly what we're talking about. I'm sorry, Snack Liker. I know that this, um, I know that this is a really fucking potentially, um, like trauma inducing segment, but it's really fucking important that we talk about this. Really fucking important. So I apologize if this is really intense for a lot of people. Yeah, Dr. Mengele. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. Sounds like the American Dr. Mengele. And keep in mind, this isn't the first time this has happened in American history, mind you. This has been done many times. You ever heard of the Tuskegee experiments? Did I say corroborate? Collaborator. Yeah, this is a collaborator. Another nurse has then then told her the pr the procedure was then to was to mitigate her heavy menstrual bleeding, which the woman had never experienced. When she explained that, the nurse responded by getting angry and agitated and began yelling at her. According to the Intercept, ICE declined to comment on the allegations in the complaint, while a LaSalle correction spokesperson said it was firmly committed to the health and welfare of those in our care. We are deeply committed to delivering high quality. Fuck off. We're not giving this person the space of day. This is a fucking lie. This is a lie. Outright. This is a lie. We know this. We know this is a lie. Law and Crime reached out to ICE for comment. Law and Crime also reached out to the DHS OIG to ask whether it has received the complaint and whether it will investigate the allegations. We will update this story if we receive responses. Read the full complaint right here. So we can read this entire complaint if we wanted to. Here's the proof. Just so you know, for all of you fucking MAGA idiots in the chat who think that you can hand wave this shit and, and, and soothe your fucking, your rotten conscience. That, yes, that is exact, Marinara, you're 100% right. That's what happens when you're trying to follow orders and the cognitive dissonance and the stress that you're under from ha from being a part of a, of a murderous, genocidal, eugenics regime cracks. Oh, absolutely, DB Michelle, 100%. 100%. Yeah, I, I agree. The history of it is way too much for me to even fully get into on this stream. There's no way I could cover all of it in a single one. Oh, I'm sure this will be, um, I mean, that's a good idea. It's a good idea to have this here. Sure. I, I could, uh, I can download this right now. So look at that. Now I'll download it. Get out of here. Give me this. Oh, I have to sign up an account. Whatever. I'll sign up an account and download it later. Or I can print it. Yeah. Oh, you can't. You have to. Okay. Well, I'll sign up later then. Fuck it. All right. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at in the United States. So I just... I just really, really want people to take some time and realize that um, that this is the state that we're in. And you know, people like to tell me that um, that I'm, I, 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 like people go on panels and say that oh, we're you're you're triggered, you're you're too angry about this. But I'm sorry, this is atrocious. This is. A beyond atrocious. This is nightmarish. This is the stuff of, 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 of horror stories. And this is happening in our country. And Donald Trump is, is joking, joking about aiming for four more years after this because he feels he's been unjustly treated. Do you know what we're going through right now? This is a fascistic seizure. No, they won't. They won't go away. What's next? What happens when it becomes inconvenient or expensive for a fascistic regime? <coughs> Excuse me, I cough. <coughs> God damn. Um, what happens when a fascistic regime, be it becomes inconvenient for them to continue dancing around the legal loopholes that they're using right now to get away with this shit? What happens? Do you know what happened in Nazi Germany? Because the concentration camps became death camps. 
That's what happens. And in fact, ours are already at that point. Keep in mind that there have been not only, not only has there been numerous reports from individuals, there have been like dozens of advocacy groups that have spoken out about the, the COVID-19 conditions in the, in the, in the uh, concentration camps here in the United States. Do you know that most people who died, most of the people who died in concentration camps in Nazi Germany died because of disease? and malnutrition, the same things that are killing the people in the concentration camps we have now in 2020. This is the genuine, this should be a genuine source of, of, of overwhelming moral outrage for this country. It is a a blot on our bloody history as the of the of the United States but it's even it's it's right now it's unfolding right now under Donald Trump and there are people there there are people who will defend this there are people who live everyday lives who will at the same time get mad about a completely fabricated conspiracy theory about uh about Hillary Clinton kidnapping children to suck out their adrenochrome like a cartoon villain. And they will literally ignore the fact that there is absolute undeniable proof that this shit is happening to people in these detention camps. That our country is operating concentration camps and is practicing eugenics, sterilizing people, making it impossible for them to reproduce based on their based on their national origin, if not just the color of their skin. This is reality. We have, there's literal, you can go find the documents yourself. We just looked at them. These are the, these are filed by the people who are going into these and advocating who are the lawyers for the people detained. There is a paper trail because they can't hide everything. They're moving too fast, too carelessly, too brutish, too brutishly to to hide everything. And this is what we're dealing with right fucking now. Yes, it is literally genocide. I mean, I feel you, Marinara, because this is fucking this has made me so mad that I've been fucking losing my train of thought every 5 seconds. Yeah, well, that's why I've been banning people in this segment for coming in and dropping Trump shit. Because if you aren't, if you're at the point where you can't even hear out a segment where something is overwhelming, there's overwhelming evidence of something that your boy in the White House is doing. If you can't sit there and at least listen to it without going, MAGA 2020, my, my, the God Emperor, blah, blah, blah. If you can't do that, you're not, you cannot be reasoned with. How can you reason with somebody who is unwilling to even consider the slightest possible criticism of the of the regime that they that they voted for? Yes. Yeah, there are some who you can never convince. There are some people who do not engage with the world in a way of learning. They don't engage hoping to learn the truth. They engage hoping to confirm what they want. They want to assuage their own ego, their own actions, and justify it post hoc. They will find any justification. Like this guy. Let me ask you something. What does the camp being located in Georgia have anything to do with what's going on there? It has nothing to do with it. It is completely irrelevant. It's literally just, uh, I'm going to say that sounds strange so that I can try and, and, and make it and, and, and cast doubt on something that has an overwhelming amount of evidence that we should be taking seriously, that anyone, any honest person should be taking this seriously. Fucking leftists took stuff that Obama did very seriously. Even liberals took some of the stuff that Obama did very seriously. Some, of course, are, are blind apologetics. Most of them just don't know some of the things that Obama did. But when confronted with it, we'll go, yeah, that's actually pretty shit. But you can, but Donald Trump can do no fucking wrong. They can do, he can do no wrong in these people's eyes. They worship him like a king. Donald Trump. They worship Donald Trump like a king. 
Yes, exactly, Mooney Machine. Precisely. And it's and and I will remind you that these people who are being detained in these camps have come here doing their best to be able to to they're doing their best to be able to declare refuge in a place that they hoped would be safe. How evil, how rotten, how amoral and empty can you possibly get? Yes, it is the same shit. That's what people need to realize. And that's why every panel I go on where they say, is Donald Trump a fascist? I go, yes, unequivocally so. And stop trying to pretend that he's not. Because this is happening. We are having we are having people be sterilized. Just just because they happen to be detained by the United States. Being taken by armed guards to the hospital to have their uterus ripped out. And guess what? This is being filed. There is a paper trail. This shit isn't going anywhere. It has to be ignored or overpowered. And that's why we see the fascistic escalation that has been going on in our country for the last fucking four years. Continual escalation. Continual. Who knows what else is already being done? We know about, let's talk about the things that have been, that have been widely documented with ICE, okay? These are not controversial things. Ice boxes. Um, under the thunder, I'll take a look at that later if I if I recall. I'm in the middle of something right now. But um, yeah, imagine the things that don't have a paper trail. That's a little even that's even scarier. We have things that have been widely documented that are not matters of opinion. Sexual assault um is rampant in these facilities. Guards sexually assaulting detainees is rampant at these facilities. Numerous groups have brought attention to this. Numerous testimonies have been collected. There has been all kinds of evidence. Two, they they will use temperature as and space um, to punish these detainees. Keep in mind, these aren't violent criminals. These are just random people who came to our country seeking refuge. They're not like they're invaders. They're not like they're enemies of the state. They're just random people who came here hoping to have a better life. And we lock them in a box and they will turn down the temperature until it's freezing cold and give them nothing except a handful of space blankets to share between people who are who are packed into cages shoulder to shoulder. There are photos, video evidence of this. Lawyers for the United States have gone in and taken videos legally. There is a paper trail for both of these things. They have been... They have been neglected with regard to hygiene products as uh, down to toothbrushes. They are not being provided with soap. They are not being provided with toothbrushes. They are not allowed to shower. Another thing that has been documented heavily, they are being sprayed with disinfectant chemicals that cause damage to the skin, eyes, mouth, and other mucous membranes, including, including genitals. They are being sprayed with this industrial cleaning chemicals because under the name of hygiene, and it just so happens that our government won't move them out of the place that they're in before they spray them. Again, documented. Oh, absolutely, True Leveler. I'm just saying that this is against totally innocent, random people. There is no justification for this. None whatsoever. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Rakasan Ra Ra Dragon. And it's only because of the, the sort of robust nature of of the modern era's ability to document things that we've even been able to know about what's been done so far and hold them back from doing worse things. Because right now we're doing things that are identical, identical to what the Nazis did in World War II. And in fact, we're doing it at an earlier point than they were. There, Many of them are literally children. Many of these people being harmed by this are literally children. ICE put children in, into cages and lowered the temperature intentionally to create cold boxes, ice boxes as they called them. They're so cold that you can't sleep. They're so cold that the human body won't go to bed. So they will get increasingly exhausted, increasingly mentally unwell until they collapse and sometimes die. A, a lot of people have died in our custody for no reason other than neglect. They're being packed in in the middle of a of a pandemic. 
And this is America in 2020. This is the United States in 2020. This is where we're at. And we have to be very real about this. We have to be very real about this. Because if we stand by, if, if Americans stand by, we are absolutely going to be in a, in a considerably worse position than Nazi Germany ever was. Are you kidding me? We have the strongest military in the world. Germany didn't even have close to the strongest military in the world at the time. And we're isolated. So I really, really, really want to hammer this home. What's happening right now? This, these are concentration camps. This is eugenics. This is justified based on fear-mongering. I mean, Donald Trump literally talked about hordes at the border. Do you remember? Do you remember that uh, caravan that was talked about that never, that just evaporated in the thin air? We have been subjected to a, a half of a decade, not even a half of a decade, let's be real, decades of, of propaganda intentionally dehumanizing people based on the color of their skin or their national origin. And it's, and this is what it leads to. This is what that type of rhetoric leads to. It leads to, it leads to, uh, people getting a power trip to dehumanizing them, to saying we can do whatever the fuck we want to these people. And believing that they're doing it for a good reason. It's indoctrination. It's propaganda. Yeah, it is. It's what national, it's what hyper-nationalism does to people. Oh, yes, of course. There's been huge, huge problems within ICE. ICE is a massively flawed, like, a, a totally fucked organization. Hell, the, the supervisor for ICE, the regional supervisor for ICE here in, in Seattle was, like, two years ago, got busted because he was stealing, he was stealing social security cards and numbers and detaining people who had social security cards. Detaining them, stealing their numbers, using it to, to, you, to, commit identity fraud for his own personal benefit and locking them in detention centers. You don't get to that point without being able to justify um, dehumanizing an entire group of people based on their skin color and, and or their national origin in this case. I mean, I'd say it's both in this case, but there's no doubt about national origin. People can can wiggle around about whether Donald Trump actually um, targets people based on race. We all know that he does, but Donald Trump supporters are in denial. So I'll give them I'll give them a little out. You can say it's national origin if you don't want to believe he's a racist. Regardless, it's a fucking crime against humanity. Oh, of course, yeah. It's that it's that it's that frothing zealotry. It's that hatred, that xenophobia we've talked about on here so many times. Every time we go through looking at um going through uh, looking at the, the 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 14 points of fascism going through and researching um, together the various historical moments where this has been used to dehumanize and harm people and that's where we're at oh yeah I mean also I you just brought up Fox and friends you know what Fox is doing these days Fox um Fox is pump is putting in we love you Trump ads so during their show a big thing will come out this is we love you trump it has fireworks a national journalistic media outlet is just openly fellating trump on the news every single day all the time because they know he watches this is a a, a news organization that employs people like tucker carlson a white nationalist a white supremacist? Thank you very much, Under the Thunder. I really appreciate those kind words because uh, it really, really means the world to me. And I I'm glad for that too. Yeah, he loves it. I'm a nationalist and this is the shit I warn, I warn myself about myself. Nationalism without socialism, we merely mean national recreancy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with you figuratively, nobody. 100%. It wasn't at all. They, they like, like the Nazis, even though they called themselves national so socialist, embraced private industry and literally had a purge of their socialist elements. So 
Yeah, it's not. Fox isn't. Fox is a propaganda outlet, 100%. But it's still allowed to be on the air and consider itself news and call itself journalism because we have no respect for truth in this country. Because we have no um, agreement on reality. We don't have an, even a slight agreement on reality. I agree that Fox should not be allowed to practice as a news entity. They should not be allowed to practice as a journalistic entity when they're just constantly praising the president and it just is function functioning as an arm of the state. Yeah, that's very true at the time. Yep, that's true. Carpe Pax. Yep. I think it should be emphasized that there is very little that can be done on the international stage here. The mechanisms for prosecuting these crimes simply does not exist. It's not adequate. It's down to Americans to stop this from happening. People cannot be placent. <laughs> correct. 100% correct, true leveler. This has to be done by Americans. Americans are the ones. There's nobody coming to save us on this one. There's nobody coming to save these people. We got to do it. We got to fucking fight. We got to figure out the ways to do that. And I don't always have the answers because we're in un unknown territory here where nobody has a precedent for some of this here. We have no precedent for fighting this, especially our generation. So we, yeah, true, true leveler. You are the true leveler. How do we stop this? Okay, let's brainstorm about that. How do we stop this? Protest is one really good way to do so. And there have been a lot of effective protests at these facilities. If there's a facility near you, chances are there are a number of groups that are currently and actively protesting. Protesting these 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 facilities makes them expensive. It means they have to hire people to do PR because the news will, uh, of course, pay attention to those things, which means they have to cover up their tracks as best as possible, which means it's more expensive and therefore harder for them. This gums up the works. That's one way you can do it. Another way, if you have a legal history or if you are considering going to school for law, you can pursue from a legal level you can become an immigration attorney. Immigration attorneys are deeply needed. International law, or, uh, yeah, international law, human rights lawyers are deeply needed. You can contribute to groups like RICES. You can contribute to groups like, like it or not, the ACLU. The ACLU, um, the American Civil, Civil Liberty Unions, has actually done a lot of work um, to combating these camps. Thank you for the follow, Lithuanian slow Snow, by the way. Very appreciate it. And yes, um, and that's another thing. A th another way that you can do this is by sharing this information. If you don't have access to these paths, you can work as a repeater. Like imagine yourself like a, a neuron in the brain. You can repeat this information and talk to people about it. Get it in front of people so that they can't look away either. We need this stuff to be known. And the other thing that you can do is, uh, and this is a random one, a very, very random one because nobody knows when this is going to happen. But you can act as a shield, if, especially if you are a white person. Say you're on a bus and they bring on uh, a ICE person to check papers. You can refuse. You can make a huge stink and make it so that, that, that they don't check that bus. This has happened multiple times where they've come in to check papers and all of the white people on the bus just stood up and said, we are not giving you our papers. We will literally block the back of the bus unless you get off because this is illegal search. This is, this is un, this is not justified. And then what ends up having to happen is that the Greyhound or whatever company you're doing has to call their management. And then the ICE people go, fuck this. We're getting out of here. This is a huge waste of our time. And then they go away and then you go on your way and you may have saved somebody's life. And not everybody, yeah, it's a, it's base Karening. It's literally being base Karening. And keep in mind, this is one that you may not ever have the opportunity to do. But if the opportunity arises, you can put yourself in that position. And white people do have an advantage because white people aren't going to be, aren't likely to be towed away by ice. Karening for good. Karen. Yes, Marinara. Exactly. You can Karen for good. Another thing that you can do is you can talk to your rep your local representatives. You can send them this story in an email and go, what the fuck? Is there a facility in our state that's doing this? And if so, you better make a statement about it or I'm going to tell every single person that I know that I will not vote for you. I will literally campaign against you if you don't address this. You can do that. You can send letters to your local representatives 
um, and actually likely have an impact. You can literally send them this paper and go, why aren't you talking about this? Why haven't you made a statement about this? Or have you? And if you have, I'll vote for you. If you haven't, I'm not voting for you. In fact, I will tell everyone I know not to vote for you. That's something you can do. These are the sorts of things you can do. And yes, if you are able-bodied and you're in a good position and you can go out and protest, yeah, the link to the paper is uh, right here. Here's the actual complaint. This is the actual complaint. Bam. I'm going to drop this in my... Um, I'm actually going to drop this in my um, Praxis area on my Discord. Bam. We got it there. So anybody can get it. And I'm going to also post the original um, article that was written on this as well. So if you need it, you can go to my Discord in the Praxis section and grab it. Oh, obviously not. No way, box you. That's that's not what I'm here to do. Although, although I will say that if you can do nothing else, if there is nothing else you can do right now. Hey, thank you. Appreciate those kind words encrypted. It's going pretty well, although we're dealing with some really depressing news right now. Yeah, the Discord is right below. If you scroll down on on Twitch, you'll see a little icon of me holding a Discord symbol. You could press that and it'll link you to the Discord. Um yeah. We'd love to have you. Um, oh, I mean, that's fair, Riot Girl Callie. But this isn't about having faith in the government. This is about um, this is about pushing on every front possible, making it as inconvenient as annoying as possible. Think about it like this: the fa a fascist war machine, a fascist hate machine, is like a giant tank, and we're a bunch of little we're a bunch of little ants. And one of the things that we can do is we can get together and we can all spit and make a big gumball and we can jam it in a gear and it'll go and it'll start to do that and if enough people are jamming every single gear and we're, we're shoving it all in there we're shoving all the gunk in there you can make it so hard for that to machine to work that it collapses under its internal under its internal contradictions that's what we have to do every single front and keep in mind there's only so much that i can even advocate for on this platform my job here what i do here on twitch is i bring people's attention so that people can take action. I let people know what's going on so that I can bring attention to them. Hey, thanks for the follow, Crow Palace. Happy to have you here. Um, yeah, that's what I do here on Twitch, is I bring attention to these things so that all of you can pull on your resources. That's how it works. It's collaborative. I don't have a whole lot of resources. The only thing, skills that I'm really good at, I'm good at communicating. I'm kind of good at talking in some ways, like like giving speeches and whatever. I'm a good writer. Um, I am good at at, um, at socializing and connecting people with one another, that's my talent. So I'm using that talent to get this word out to as many people as possible because other people with different talents might be able to contribute to this gumming up of the, uh, yeah, of the, of the, the, the gumming up of the fascist machine, which is what we can do. We exist, or at least I can't speak for everyone in my chat, but a lot of us here exist in the American, what is called the Imperial Core. And our battle is to fight that, is to resist that. Yeah, a lot. Exactly. A lot of organizations right now are having meetings. Um, and if you have money, you can contribute to groups like Rices, which do a ton of great work. If you have um, if you have a car, you could even just drive people to protest if you're too afraid. Like and no blame on that. It is scary to go out and protest sometimes. But if you're too worried or you're not comfortable enough with it, you can literally sign up with these groups just to drive people just to drive people to the event. And that's considerably safer than going to the event like and being there yourself, and yet you're still helping. You're providing a necessary service. This is what it's all about. It's about expanding our numbers and, and getting whatever little privileges we all have. We all probably have something we can do to help. And putting them all together, and together we can build something really great, and we might actually be able to jam up some of this horrific nonsense and stop and save lives. We can't. I don't think that we can stop all of it right now. I don't think that we can, unfortunately. We're dealing with an overwhelming power, but we can stop a lot of it. We can make it really, really hard. Remember the guy that griefed the ICE detention center in Seattle? Why not grief more in Minecraft? Well, see, the thing is, um, that particular incident, like, I feel like that's not the best incident to do, personally. I, I feel like collective action would have been better there. But yeah, um, he definitely did. He definitely did do that. Um, but yeah, that particular incident, unfortunately was not amazingly effective. 
And I think we need to be more effective, which means we need to work together. Because alone, we really aren't that strong in the face of state power. But if we work together, we can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, hell, remember, um, hey, oh yeah, oh, welcome to the community, Extremely Bad Faith. Nice name. <laughs> um, happy to have you here. Um, thanks for the follow. Um, so the, um, so yeah, for example, do you know that, um, here's another thing you can do right now. That's like a good way to get hooked in. Follow never again action on Twitter. Like, I know this is like, this is the lowest tier of, of activision, of activism, activision. Oh my God. Brain. Um, a activism. The lowest tier is, is plugging in on Twitter, but you can follow something like Never Again Action, a group that has regularly provided me with an incredible amount of insight. Following that group can get you a, um, a, yeah, I've been playing a bunch of fucking Blizzard games lately. And I've literally, I've been ranting to my partners about Activision a bunch, but, um, activism. So you can, you can follow those groups and at least be plugged in because you never know when something might come along that you can actually help with. Yeah, it is each according to their ability. Yep. From each according to their ability to each according to their need or the reverse as I like to do to each according to their need from each according to their ability, because I believe we should put needs first. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. That's a really awesome resource. If you could drop that in the Praxis one, that'd be amazing. Yep. Yep. Leave action for action's sake to the fascies. We have to be informed on what we do, but we still have to be bold. The lit crit guy's newest video has something to say about and how we've lost the memory of the power of the crowd. True, Zanzi. But I mean, keep in mind, there's a reason why we've lost that. Like, there has been a propaganda war on young Americans for our entire generation. Millennials and Gen X got owned after the hippies, after the fucking, after the, the boomers and the hippies had their, had their huge influx of political activism. Um, there was just this redoubled effort to just demonize protest, to demonize ex political expression. How do we drum up international outrage over genocide? You want to know how we do it? We get it in front of their faces. We talk about it all the time and we don't let them get away with it. We don't let them get away with it. This has to be documented. So let's talk about, let's talk about this because I think this is really interesting. I think sometimes, and you know, this is a, a, a really big topic. There's a lot of stuff that can be talked about this, but I think sometimes people underestimate what they can do and, and fall into guilt and keep in mind that participate, uh, you know, participation in politics isn't about guilt. It shouldn't be about guilt. Um, it, you do what you can do. And as long as you are being honest and challenging yourself to do what you can do, to actually do what's within your capability to go out and do, even if it's a little scary, it might require being, being a little brave, but as long as you're doing what you can do, then you're helping. And that means a big difference. We need people who can document shit. We need people, um, who can, provide, uh, who, who can make food. We need people who can, um, who are n really, really good at like sourcing stuff. So like, Hey, I know where I can get some really cheap water. We're going to go buy all this water, save our organization a ton of money and go get water to protesters. All of these things are deeply, deeply needed. The only, there's an illusion that the only role in political activism is the people up on this front with their hands up and screaming. That's a really fucking important role, but it's hardly the only role. Lots of people have to be talking about this. Yes, absolutely. We have to have a lot of people talking about this. We have to be getting this in front of people's faces. And you'll notice, you'll notice something that I bring up stuff like this in other conversations all the time. I find ways to connect them. So for example, in Friday's debate, in my last speech, I talked, I brought, uh, I brought camps up. I was talking about how the, uh, the beatings will continue until, mo you know, until morale improves mentality that we have towards policing is the same thing that justifies security theater in our airports is the same thing that justifies surveillance is the same thing that justifies imprisoning refugees at our borders. It is a, a culture of demonization and dehumanization that goes over and over and over again. I do remember about that. We need to be obnoxious. We need to be obnoxious about this. And effective 
But nonetheless, we cannot let these the, that are, let our enemies dominate the narrative. It's incredibly important that we provide alternative narratives that offer truth and answers to people who are hurting. We will never make progress if we don't do that. And the other thing is, again, analyze your talents and analyze your own capability in, in seeing what you can actually do politically. Because it, chances are, you can probably do something. You can probably do something. There is probably some skill that you have um, that can um, that can uh, help a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Who knows? Maybe you have a little bit of de graphic design capability. You might be able to just make a flyer at home and go slam that shit up in your hometown. It would irritate a bunch of right-wingers, but people might see it and start thinking. Alternative narrative sounds like fake news to me. Lol. The, 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 the fact of the matter is we don't control the narrative. So uh, like it or not, we're the alternative narrative, even if we're the true narrative. Even if we're the true narrative. One thing the right does really well that the left doesn't do when it comes to breaking news and social media cycles, it's not just stating the facts, but preempting the other side's argument and dismissing them before they're made. Yes, that's true. There are times like flyers in real life can be really good. Um, you, you know what's a, you know what's been really effective in the past? People using if they have property, using their property and turning it into propaganda. So, say you have a big white fence in front of your house. It's your house. It's your property. If you're lucky enough to have a house and a white fence, you can go slap up. A, you can hire an artist or or even just find a friend who's an artist and say, hey, why don't you paint a, a political mural on my fence? And it'll say, uh, say their names and have a face of, of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, 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 and people like that. You know, this is literally me spitballing. I don't even know if that's like a good one. But you see what I mean? Like you can put these messages out. You can do that. We have the ability to do that, and we need to be doing that. You have to be loud enough to the point where people who normally try to ignore what we say can't ignore what we're saying anymore. Yeah, you have to be. It is annoying. And we do have to be. It is a point in history where we have to accept the fact that we're kind of, um, I, I don't want to say we're evangelizing, but we are absolutely reaching out and trying to grab people and go, hey, our country is tearing people's wombs out based on your skin color. Holy fuck, wake up, help. I have messages from the CD that the CDC that masks aren't good for healthy people. Yes. Okay, right now there is a constant 24/7 propaganda machine constantly firing out white supremacist propaganda fascistic propaganda. It's called Fox News. It's called Steven Crowder. These guys are constantly spitting this shit out. Boom, boom, boom. Lie after lie after lie. Sometimes so blatant they don't even bother to cover it up. They're just blasting it out all the time. And we need to challenge that shit and we need to provide people with the actual answers. Because otherwise we're doomed to just be lost. Yes, precisely marinara now is the time to use up all that good um goodwill and be as annoying as possible about these issues because quite frankly we're a little disempowered we need to get a lot of people on our side and when we're together we are no longer disempowered as it turns out it is incredibly incredibly expensive like phenomenally expensive to maintain a propaganda culture yeah, culture jamming. Yes. I mean, culture jamming is like a whole thing. Yes. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. Challenging these people, mocking them. We need we need the comedians. We need the artists. We need the 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 programmers. We need everybody of every type. Every type of skill that you have, there is something that you could be putting that towards that can be making a difference. I don't think we Listen, I don't know. I think that's a really hard thing. We definitely don't have the funding, but I do think we actually have the numbers. And I now I don't think the left has the numbers, but we have the sympathies of of a lot of of increasingly larger numbers. And we need to hammer that home really hard and get a lot of those people. We need the shit posters 100%. Are you kidding me? Lefty memes are great. Even when they're mucho texto, they're still really good because people think they're funny and they learn from them. 
And while it's true that I don't know that the hard left doesn't have the numbers to do anything like that right now, but we are winning the sympathies. We're winning that. We need more popular voices. We need people to be really smart in our advocacy, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be a really effective leftist edutainer who teaches people and inspires people to go find what they can put their skills to, because this just happens to be what I can put my skill to. My skill, my whole life has been studying how to communicate. That like literally from when I was younger, I was, I, my, my parents made me do lots of art. My parents made me learn like a whole bunch of shit about reading and writing. I was super into academics when I was a kid and that's what I'm good at. So I'm using that to the best of my ability. I'm yeah. An edutain mentor. Yeah. That's a good one. Excellent. You managed to stone stonewall a racism denier the other day into quitting first. I'm hoping that will give the illusion of winning that helps sway people. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes holding someone to a point can actually win people over. If you get if you get into someone who's like a racism denier and you go, if racism is gone, why this? And they don't answer it, you can pin them on that. That is that is a, that is now we're talking about rhetoric. Now I happen to be pretty decent at rhetoric, I think. I like to think I'm pretty okay at rhetoric and that's its own entire skill. See, rhetoric is its whole skill. How you effectively make arguments is a skill and it's one that I have, which is why I'm trying to use it. But there are other skills that other people have that I don't even know what they might be. You might have them and you can probably find an application for that skill. And don't fucking let go. That's another thing. We cannot fall into doomerism. We absolutely have to keep fighting for this. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting. And that means that we have to take care of ourselves and one another. One of the, I, I genuinely, genuinely, deeply believe that right now, one of the most important things that we can do is look out for one another. We are at a time of unprecedented social alienation. People are lonely. People are poor. People are struggling. And if we can actually build social connections, take care of one another, we might actually be able to have a lot of people survive these hard times and they will be very strong and very angry on the other end. But we have to be willing to take to challenge our assumptions about the world. True, I am trying to rhetoric everyone right now. I'm very open about that. I use my rhetoric to be convincing because I want you to think about the things that I'm thinking about. And if you find them to be true as well, if you find them to be interesting and edifying and motivating and they reveal your eyes, hell yeah, then I've then I've accomplished it.